Welcome home, Cliff Kingsbury, Jaden Daniels, or maybe is a little more hostile than home. What does it mean? What does all of this mean? We're going to talk about it. It's another edition of Southwest Bias. Get that stuff out of here. It's Southwest Bias. Coming to you live from Studio K, of course, presented by Circle K. Make sure you download the Circle K app and join the inner circle today. Save yourself some money. It's Southwest Bias. I'm Eric Ruby. I'm joined by Bo Brock. It's Cardinal season, so we're talking lots and lots of cards. Don't worry. Diamondbacks playoffs, maybe. Suns regular <laughs> season starting, for sure. We're going to get more into everything. And we're talking a little ASU today as well because the Washington Commanders and the Arizona Cardinals are facing off this Sunday week four in the NFL and that means that Cliff Kingsbury returning to the house that he built Man. State Farm Stadium I'm kidding mm. I'm kidding but also Jaden Daniels returning to ASU in fact practicing at ASU let's start with Cliff when you saw the schedule release right mm -hmm. and you knew Cliff Kingsbury was going to be offensive coordinator for Washington Commanders you were right. like Oh, week four. Is that, is that one you're circling on the calendar? Yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't you? I mean, I know that you broke up with him, right? You said, <laughs> you hey, did. this isn't working for us. And it's it's not you. It's me. But really, it was you. Uh, they cut bait in, as far as Cliff Kingsbury after he signed a long extension that they're still paying for and will pay for for the next four years. Um, that look, Cliff Kingsbury's coming to town. If anybody's feeling revengeful, spiteful, it's going to be Cliff. Yeah. And same thing armed in, with his quarterback that as well was a Valley outcast. And, you know, call it right, call it wrong, whatever it is, you know, Jaden Daniels exited Arizona State, not on great terms. You have viral videos of, of teammates, former teammates saying horrible things. And then yeah. he goes on to find success that nobody ever imagined. Even their Heisman wildest. Success. Yes, Heisman. Second overall pick. And now people are questioning, was Jaden Daniels the top pick? In the, should he have been the top pick in the draft? So it, there's a lot of great storylines going into this game. And the Arizona Cardinals, uh, you know, they have to avoid all. They can't buy mm -hmm. into those narratives. They have to take care of business come Sunday. So we're very familiar with Cliff Kingsbury. We watched the early success, mm -hmm. right? Because let's not like, let's not beat around the bush. He did have some success here. He did. He was able to orchestrate a good amount of wins. And then it was like, as soon as it turned bad, it got real sour. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like as an offensive coordinator with the commanders, is that like his role? Do you feel like that's where he should be? Not head coach, but right. offensive coordinator. I think that's where he should top out at. I mean, I think that's pretty evident. Like, is he better suited to be an offensive coordinator? I think his days of being a head coach should be over and that he just slides comfortably in what he's most well suited to do and that's call offensive plays for a collegiate team or he, in this case an NFL team I mean it still remains to be seen is is he going to be able to do what he wasn't able to do here and play that game of chess and make the proper adjustments when NFL defenses as they always do play catch up and they have you know a blueprint to slow down what you've been doing so well and Cliff Kingsbury and Jaden Daniels have had a lot of success. But, yeah, Cliff Kingsbury, no doubt about it, is more well-suited to just be and focus on being the offensive play caller instead of running the entire show. So yeah. is he in a better spot? Sure. But, you know, is he a guy that's going to be the best offensive coordinator or in the conversation for best offensive coordinator in the league? league year in, year out? I still think the jury's out on even that. But you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, as far as how we should – perceive Cliff Kingsbury takes over historically bad offense the previous season under Steve Wilkes in 2018 gets them back to the modern day offense team goes from three wins to five wins to eight wins to 11 wins the progress was there it was definitely there and then for lack of a better phrase fell off of a cliff there you go I mean yeah. it's there's no better way to to wrap it up than that <laughs> with when it comes to cliff because you're right I mean I used to listen to literally every single word that this guy said at press conferences obviously watched every single snap of football while he was coaching the cardinals and it was really frustrating because you saw something work and you said cool mm -hmm. and then they went to it about a thousand times and it stopped working and you thought well they have to change they have to to, to switch it up 
And then they never did. Never. And then they never did. And of course, that rubs off on somebody like a Kyler Murray, who then kind of falls into this category of doesn't make reads, isn't a smart player, uses his legs too much, you know, doesn't do his homework, where it's like, how much of that was Kyler? How much of that was just the offense and not being confident and comfortable in it? But if you look at Washington, they're coming off of their best win of the season, 38 to 33 over the Bengals. And Jaden Daniels cooked. 21-23, 254 yards, two touchdowns through the air, 12 carries, 39 yards on yeah. the ground, one touchdown. Those are Kyler Murray numbers. Yeah. Those, those are Kyler Murray numbers. Now, can he replicate that over an entire season? I don't know, but you might have been able to find another dynamic young quarterback to pair with Cliff. And while this game is so important for the Cardinals and to kind of make that stamp and say, hey, we've moved on from you. We're better than you. We're favored in this game. You're coming to our home and we're going to beat you. I don't think that this book is written on Cliff Kingsbury until you get to week 10, 11, 12, 13. Sure. Heck, maybe to get to next season. Right. Like you said, yeah. it takes some time for defenses to figure out. But does he change? Does he go in and adapt? And on a small scale, when it comes to the Cardinals, obviously, I think the defense has been better than what people have expected no so far this year. Yeah. And you have to give a massive credit to the coaching staff. But do the Cardinals have the pieces to play that that small game of chess within a game? To contain Jaden Daniels, to contain a Cliff Kingsbury offense, are you at all concerned about Washington replicating a performance like they had against the Bengals? Well, it's a good, healthy fear. I think that best case scenario is that Washington came off a game like it did on Monday night where Jaden Daniels plays at a high level, the highest level that we've seen from the quarterback position this season outside of Kyler's performance in week two against the Rams where he had a perfect quarterback rating. Like, it's a healthy amount of fear to keep people focused on what's going to happen. I mean, you, you like, you can't overlook Washington, even though, even with an upstart at two and one, they're, they're really like, are people thinking, are they legit? Like, the Arizona Cardinals have to start to be part of the process of debunking that, mm -hmm. right? That Jaden Daniels and Cliff Kingsbury are not the next iteration of, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, Ooh. right? Like, I know that's that's absurd to even be said. And I, 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 I'm I, going to have to look at myself in the mirror after this and say, what's wrong with you? What happened to the person I knew, I thought I knew? But look, I mean, the Arizona Cardinals, Eric, uh, Southwest Bias viewers out there, and make sure you drop a like on this. That's right. The Arizona Cardinals, it, in the very few moments under this new regime, this is one of those games where you have far more to lose than you have the game. Mm -hmm. If you lose this game, it starts to raise a lot of questions as far as the coaching staff, the front office, quarterback. Like everything starts to look a little bit different and has a, a different shade on it than is it looks right now as everything is butterflies and roses, you know, and, and they're just following this trajectory in a rebuild. This this kind of stunts things a little bit if they lose on Sunday. So mm -hmm. I think the healthy fear is there that this team needs to come in and make Jaden Daniels look like a rookie quarterback and look like the offensive coordinator look like the Cliff Kingsbury that they said, hey, thanks, but no thanks. We're going to move on. It's a chance to make a statement multiple times over. Sure. Because you're one and two on the season, but you've played two really good teams and you've dominated another team that's not great. They're not terrible, but right. they're not great in the Rams. Washington is coming off their high point of the season so far. They're two and one. But they're not predicted to win this game. Cardinals are favored by yeah. a little bit over a field goal. And ESPN's matchup prediction, they're about 61.4% in favor of the Cardinals winning. You're at home as well. And you are going to be coming up on a pretty tough stretch of football games for the Arizona Cardinals after this. You take on the 49ers, the Packers, the Chargers, and then you hit the Dolphins. Might mm -hmm. be a little bit easier when you get there. But again, like this, this is a this is a team where it's like a, a litmus test for them. Right. Sure. You, you go out there and if you play close, OK, maybe you're just a, a middling team, kind of like how some people expect you to be. You get dominated, then it's you're not looking too great. You dominate. It's like, OK, this team takes care of teams that are worse than them. But more so than just this game from a organizational standpoint to extend Cliff Kingsbury, to extend Steve Kime, to do it before you extend Kyler Murray. And then you get rid of them. You replace them with Monty Austin for mm -hmm. you replace them with Jonathan Gannon. We've been talking for years now at this point about, Hey, look at the rebuild. Look at the culture shift. Look at the infrastructure. Look at the Cardinals yeah. are doing it right. They did it right. They have the right guys leading this. Look how they've invested in Kyler. I'm not saying that if they lose this game that those decisions are wrong, but sure. you do want to walk out of there with a punctuation mark of just 
boom. Like, move on, done. Cliff Kingsbury, you're in the past. We made the right move. We beat you, and we're moving on with that. For sure. And and that's where it is. Okay, you've got a lot to lose and very little to gain. Like, if you mm-hmm. if you win, you go to two and two, even your record out. You beat the guy that you, you, you decided, hey, we're better without, and you proved yourself right in that scenario, mm-hmm. and we chose the right guy as his successor. All those things, like, you can still have those conversations. You lose this game as far as when you look at your chart where you're going like this, you take a massive dip down mm-hmm. and then you have to dig yourself. Then you have the the Herculean effort of trying to dig yourself back out of that hole. It's not all just like this. And that's that's what, you know, you have a very real reality because any given Sunday, right, the cliche, it, it exists. And also what we witnessed on Monday Night Football, what Washington's capable of, mm-hmm. you have a very dark reality of you know, falling short and, you know, very serious and conversations have to arise and be had. If if they lose this game, and especially if they lose this game in rather convincing fashion, it's not it's not incorrect to say that Cliff Kingsbury played a role in slowing down the Cardinals' rebuild and stunting it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it's it's over, it's done, right. but, but one and three and two and two are very different stories. Well, like what you said, like you you have to start to change the perception that's that's going to leave an awful stench around this organization right. against the 49ers. And I know they're they're down a little bit roster wise. They have a bunch of injuries. And then you got to go to Green Bay. Like that's not gonna be easy. No. Like to to have to avoid, you know, one and three, one and four, one and five start, then that yeah. that becomes tougher. And then that that like week by week, your the conversations get more in depth about what's going wrong. And you're picking up the pieces from the fallout. So you can avoid a lot of that. But like if you beat Washington, you beat Cliff Kingsbury, you beat a rookie quarterback, it's it's good. But at the same time, everybody's going to be talking like, OK, well, you took you did what you had mm-hmm. to do. Yeah, I think the only way that they talk about that differently is that this defense comes out and holds them to under 20 points. Gets like picks. Yeah, yeah, if, like, if like they did against the Rams and they I mean they held the Lions For to sure. 20. So if, if you go out there against commanders team that that almost put up 40 on the Bengals yeah. and Jaden Daniels had one of the greatest quarterback performances we've seen, I mean, like from a efficiency standpoint some of the throws he was making were insane this this is a big game one throw was insane there was a couple good throws stop <laughs> most, there was of, a, most of them were at the line of scrimmage shocker I'm to talking, nobody there, there was some deep but you you are right absolutely <laughs> shocker to nobody. i do remember seeing tweets from commanders fans earlier in the season before the Bengals game where they're like hey does cliff kingsbury know that passes can go forward yeah. and my answer was no, but he does have a quarterback that can sling it downfield. That quarterback is also making his return to the Valley. We're going to talk about Jaden Daniels practicing at ASU. We're going to talk about Empire today first, though, because the Arizona Cardinals don't want to hit the floor on their season, but you want to have real nice floors and wherever you're living, whether it's an apartment, whether it's at a home, whether you're at a business and you're like, man, I really need to spruce up this office. I know that's what we've done over here at PHNX Empire today. Easy, quick, convenient, but they get it done right. They don't just do it fast to get in and get out. They do it to make sure that your life is easier, but they also will make sure that they install the absolute best flooring possible, which is why they don't guarantee you the lowest price. And sometimes the lowest price is great, right? Mm. We're in the Studio K, Circle K. You want the lowest price on gas. Nobody doesn't want the lowest price on gas. However, when it comes to flooring, you don't want to skimp out at all, right? It's worth the investment. Plus, you can use their virtual floor visualizer. Make sure that the type of floor that just you take a picture pick. with your phone just boom Load it it's just perfect. like that it's so easy and it's the right decision to do when it comes to flooring plus on top of all of that if it wasn't enough for you you can get 350 dollars off schedule a free in-home estimate today all listeners receive 350 dollars off when they use promo code phnx some restrictions do apply so see empire today.com slash phnx for details you could argue the floor of Jaden Daniels' career so far was his time at Arizona State <laughs> University. And I do want to plug on gophnx.com. The wonderful Craig Morgan has an article about Jaden Daniels and Herm Edwards for you ASU fans out there as well. But I know you're not as in, in the trenches when it comes to ASU. And mm-hmm. I, I am a little bit on the opposite of that. But what do you think it means for Jaden Daniels coming back? And I mean, playing the Cardinals, but practicing at yeah. the school he was at before he went on to win the Heisman, become the number two pick, and now see early success in the NFL. It's got to be surreal, right? It, it's it's like the guy who uh, was disrespected in high school is going back to his for his reunion, and he's now 
you know, mega mm-hmm. successful. And he gets to kind of puff his chest out and say, yeah, let me just tell you what I've done since uh, the days yeah. you guys to shove me in, in lockers or actually talk shove tra- me out of lockers. Yeah, shove me <laughs> out and talk trash on my name. Um, some of the most disrespectful media to hit the social, uh, the internet. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, I think it, I don't know. It, it is different, right? I mean, he's, he's mm-hmm. as a member, like he's done so much. But at the same time, like, do we all have that ability to to be petty and, and want to show and continue to prove, you know, the place that kind of sent him packing wrong? Absolutely. Yeah, I think there has to be some motivation there. It would probably be less if they weren't practicing at ASU. Yeah. But walking through those halls, being on that field, seeing the campus. I mean, this is where you spent your formative years. This Jaden Daniels was part of, if not the reason, that the Herm Edwards era got so much Mm buy-in was because of this guy coming. Oh, wow, this guy is coming? Yeah. This is the guy. No, I'm serious. And, and his debut true, against true against, freshman Michigan State. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Uh, it, 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 his debut against the uh, the Kent State Golden Flashes. I was actually on the call for that game for our, our college radio station, and I remember watching. I was like, "Oh, they they got their guy." <laughs> and now you look back and you say, "Obviously, they had the guy. They just didn't know how to utilize him correctly." But. What I've always found funny with quarterbacks is that even the ones who get taken high, they're like, I don't have a chip on my shoulder. Nobody ever believed in me. Like Baker Mayfield's the perfect example of that, where he's like, nobody ever believed in the number one overall pick, Mm -hmm. the Heisman. Nobody ever believed, right? But with Jaden Daniels, what's a little bit different is that you go to ASU and not only do the fans, but your teammates go out and turn on you. And then you go out there, you go to LSU. Uh, to be honest, like a lot of people from ASU did not believe that you would reach any sort of heights remotely close mm-hmm. to winning the Heisman. You go out, you dominate, you get the Heisman, you're a top two pick in the draft. And so far, you're playing like a top one pick in the draft yeah. three weeks into the season. But that's still the truth. If he goes out there and he dominates, you know that there's not only a motivation to go three and one. And I'm sure that's the main thing. But in the back of your head, you always want to prove the people wrong that doubted you. Sure. No matter what. And there is no doubt that Jaden Daniels did not have belief from the people at Arizona State University. Yeah. And to be fair, he got he got caught up in a really, really tough situation, a really bad situation. And that's just the Herm Edwards effect of it. Yeah, all. I mean, it was it was program malpractice what was going on there. I mean, we we go back and we rehash all the talent that was on that team. It wasn't just Jaden Daniels. It was Rashard White. It was Brandon Ayuk. It was Ricky Persall. It was so much NFL, so talent. Much NFL talent that, you know, NF, uh, ASU hasn't been able to say each and every draft season. Oh, yeah, there's a Sun Devil, right? Forks up as he gets drafted mm-hmm. because he's getting drafted, you know, out of a different program. And it, it really is unfortunate. But what I want to say to Janet Daniels here, and it, he doesn't need this. Like, I think you can lean into the pettiness if you want this week. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm going to go Robin Williams from Goodwill Hunting and say it's not your fault. It's not. It's not your fault. Like, it's not your fault that they just didn't know what to do with your talent. And they. It might be his mom's fault, some of the recruiting violations. Whatever. I don't (laughs) care. It's not his fault. As far as he was a member of the team, had the ability, like, they had the ability to take any, anything that resembled his Heisman Trophy winning season. Like, they didn't get any of that out of him. Like, people thought he was damaged goods leaving Tempe. And he turned out to be the exact opposite and went the, you know, the trajectory it was unbelievable what he was able to do i mean his numbers at lsu rivaled joe burrow's season where he won the heisman with mm-hmm. the most talented team arguably in nfl or in state of play history so Jaden daniels has, has just completely flipped the script but and it's not his fault but at the same time the, the, is it going to fuel him to come back here to walk the halls of arizona state and that athletic facility Absolutely. I don't think that I think that's unavoidable and, and good on him yeah. if he wants to use that for himself. I think that fuels him probably every single week, every single day, even in a minor capacity. It's probably what fueled him when he got to LSU because it was very obvious they were not utilizing his talent correctly. Even when he had good games, when you go and you look at how he played at LSU, you're like, this guy was just in the wrong position. And for somebody with that much talent, with that type of pedigree, to have that that mark on your resume of, hey, I went to ASU and it, it kind of stunk, yeah. right? It's sometimes hard not to have that, that self-doubt with there. But if there's anything that he's proven and exercised that demons is that that's so much more on Herm Edwards and the infrastructure and the coaching, and sorry, the lack of infrastructure that that program was able to implement mm-hmm. around him. And he probably carries that week in, week out because in order to be the best, you have to have that type right. of edge, right? 
And he definitely has that edge. He has that F you. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to play and I'm going to I'm going to run not through somebody because I'm going to fly around like a cartoon yeah. character, but I'm going to pick up the extra yards if I need there. Right. Yeah. I'm going to throw the ball down. I need to learn some lessons on getting. He down. does. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying I've been saying that since ASU. Yeah. The dude looks like a, a rag doll when yeah, he gets string hit. bean. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not just every week that motivates him, because when you walk in this week and you're actually physically there. Like, imagine you were at one of your old jobs, a job that you put so much time and energy and Mm -hmm. effort into in a very public job, Mm -hmm. right? And then you go back to that building. You're there. It's impossible to not have those types of memories and those feelings come back and flood you. And if you can channel that correctly, you might be looking at a man on fire. It's going to be an incredible duel. Jaden Daniels, Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury, Jonathan Gannon, Arizona Cardinals, Washington Commanders. It's hard to say four weeks into year two of a rebuild, but this is a massive game for the Arizona Cardinals, and nobody covers massive games better than the PHNX Cardinals crew. Of course, it's Bo Brock, geez, Johnny Venerable, Damon Dog, Britton Golden, all of the cast of characters you love to see. Make sure you subscribe to PHNX Sports so that you catch all their 4.30 p.m. weekday shows and, of course, pregame, halftime, postgame show this season. Sunday, and of course, you can follow them on Twitter at phnx underscore cardinals. You can follow Bo at Bo Brock, and of course, you can follow me at Eric Ruby E R I K R U B Y. I am live five days a week on the PHNX Sun Devil Show. If you're catching this early on Thursday, or even if you're not, Todd Graham, Todd Graham on the ASU show today, former wow. Arizona State University head coach. We pre-recorded that head one, Coach Todd Graham, about forty minutes. Wow. About 40 minutes with Todd Graham, going to be in your feeds about 1.30, live on YouTube, about 2.30 will be in your audio feed, so make sure that you check that Does out. He, hold on, avoiding major spoilers, but is he wearing the Michael Jackson headset? Like no, he no, 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 no Michael oh. Jackson headset, but I, I will give a slight spoiler, the man misses Tempe. And you can Wouldn't. you can you can tell that he has some incredible love for this program. Make sure you check that out, even if you're just a football fanatic, or if you're somebody who's kind of excited about this ASU regime. He's going to get you absolutely. He's wearing the sweatbands at least. No, no sweatbands. He has a cool office though. Cool office. Guess what? You're just going to have to check it out. PHNX <laughs> Sun Devils later today, and of course right here on PHNX Sports. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We will be back next week for even more sweet, sweet, sweet. Southwest bias. Get that stuff out of here. It's Southwest bias.